All right, welcome back to Bay Air Maker Faire 2018. Uh, we are here to check out some of the cool machines and processes people brought. We've got some vacuum forming, we've got some clay 3D printing, we've got some CNC machining. This is all really good tech that you can use to make stuff in your own home and you know for your own project. So yeah, why don't we go and check those out? Thank you to Adam3D for sponsoring this year's trip to Make a Fair Bay Area. Bar with the Maslow CNC. I feel like we're going from from good to better to to just mind blown. Um, so you guys have a CNC router. I don't want to call it a table, but you guys have a, a frameless CNC router. How does that work out? Uh, so the way it works is it's uh, controlled by these two cables. Are their chains? And it's, a, um, it's not a traditional CNC with a Cartesian coordinate system in X and Y. Um, basically, by, but we do still have two degrees of freedom and two controlling points. Uh, so basically, we can, just by moving these two chains, uh, cut out any shape you want. Yeah. Yeah. And if, if you see my videos on the hang printer, um, you'll kind of know what that ends up looking like. It's a lot like uh, the hang printer. It's yeah. very similar to the hang printer. <laughs> True. Um, so it's, it's, a, it's a router on there, it's just sliding over your workpiece, um, and it has two bricks just to, to keep you pressed on, and, and that, that never jumps around, right? No, no it, it, it's very stable. Um, it doesn't have any sort of it, uh, jerk factor. When you're routing by hand, it can be easy if you, if you hit a knot, it can jump a little bit and it'll bite. We don't really get that because it doesn't react. Uh, it's just it's, you know, stable inertia. Ton of weight, yeah. And you could essentially build this as, as large as you want, right? This is full-size sheet of plywood. Um, what's the largest one you've done? I, I don't know if I've seen anyone actually do one bigger than a sheet of plywood because it's hard to find things to cut that are bigger than a sheet of plywood. Sure. I'm really hoping someone will do a building size one that draws murals. Yeah, um, that would be nice. So there's a software setting for you can go as big as you want. <laughs> so it cuts, it cuts plywood. I've also heard aluminum kind of works with, with this setup. I haven't personally cut aluminum, but I've seen YouTube videos of it, of it happening. Uh, you can cut foam, you can cut sheetrock, you can cut um, basically anything that comes in a 4x8 sheet, plastic. So, so you guys are selling a, a kit of this uh, setup, right? Yep, so the kit includes everything except for the router, the bricks, and the 2x4s to make the frame. Uh, the, the goal <laughs> you, you, you wouldn't want to ship bricks around, nope. yeah. <laughs> no, it doesn't make any sense to ship the bricks. Uh, the goal is that it all ships in a medium flat rate box, so it's like $12 to ship anywhere in the US and $60 anywhere in the world. Sweet. Sweet. Good concept. How long does it take to set up? I set this one up in three hours, but I've done a couple. So did, did you also build the frame in, in those three hours? Yep, uh, from from like the opening the box to putting it together. Oh, nice. But I've done a couple, so we say like a weekend. There's no soldering or anything fancy. It's it's an Arduino, um, and then the software runs on Windows, Linux, and Mac, and just takes a USB port. It's just it's the same you know CNC tool chain that anyone else uses. Cool. Yep. Uh, designs are open source. People can build one, right? Yep. The designs completely open source. All the hardware, all the electronics, all the software, firmware, everything. Uh, it's all on our website. Uh, and that is uh, MaslowCNC.com. All right. Good talking to you. Yeah. Thanks for your time and uh, Thanks for yeah. Checking it out. Enjoy the show. All right. So I'm here with uh, Ron from Emerging Objects, and you guys have the 3D Potter that you guys brought. That is. It's, ah, oh, look, look at those prints. So how does this work? What is this? Well, what this is is a 3D printer that prints clay. Yeah. And so Emerging Objects is a company that is working on 3D printing architecture. And we joined forces with 3D Potter. And we've come together to make a place called the Bottery where we can make robotic pottery. All right. So you're just printing regular clay on a regular 3D printer-like structure? Right. Um, regular that clay, porcelain, terracotta. Any kind of clay. I've even gone out and dug clay from the ground and put in these machines. Yeah. You guys have some some really nice color changes going on in, in some of those prints over there. Um, so then this gets fired and glazed and used. Gets fired. Uh, you can glaze it. You can sculpt it. 
you can scan and print. I mean, the, the, the potential is unlimited, really. And what's beautiful about it is that if you don't like it, you can ball up the clay and put it back in the machine and print again. That is nice. That is nice. Uh, so how do you program these? Because I'm, I'm thinking you're not just using the same 3D printing process with you know slicing uh, output? Well, you can. You can just use regular slicing methods and model and print. We're doing something particularly special here, which is we're controlling the G-code in a way that is making these deviations that really celebrates the plasticity of clay. Yeah, I, I like how it, how it all droops down. You've got some vases that are just gravity, those droops. You're using gravity and, and the plasticity of clay. And that's what makes an object feel handmade. And so that's what makes, I think, some of these objects really special. It's, it's organic. It's nice. You're also showing off a uh, coral reef revitalizing print there. How did, how did that come together? Well, we've been working with scientists in our company, Emerging Objects, that uh, together we're looking at the best possible habitat for coral to latch onto. And so we've pr made that, and we've also made it special so that it can be either deployed from a boat or scuba divers can go and, and insert it in the, in the ground or under the ocean. And uh, so we're launching this. We just finished printing 1,800 of these, and they're going to be tested all over the world. How long does one of those little prints take? Eight minutes. Wow, that is, that is fast. All right. Well, thank you for your time. It sounds yeah. like an awesome project. Thanks for yeah. having me. So I'm here with John from yeah. the Vacform, and you guys have a digital vacuum former. Digital I mean, vacuum former. Yeah, I mean, I've seen vacuum formers before, but this one is digital now. What's, what's different? Uh, it's digital because we worked out the heat curves for different plastics, and it's in the software. So um, unlike other vacuum formers where you have to like experiment, it's all built in the software. You, all, all you have to do is select the material, press start, and all the calculations are done for you by the, by the yeah, machine. Um, so you can, you can select the material, which I'm going to do now. So that's selected. I set the thickness. After setting the thickness, I'm good to go. I press start, and we're just going to wait for the temperature to go up to 160. That low for hips? That is pretty nice. Yeah, it's. Um, we can actually go a little higher, but let's start with the default settings. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so you've got a few molds with you. What What is that mold material that you're using right now? Um, this was originally sculpted um, in clay by a sculptor but we resin cast it so that it's sturdy enough for the vacuum former. But um, typically you, you, could, you could 3D print something that's perfectly fine, um, print it in PLA just as long as it's more shells, more support material inside yeah. so it doesn't collapse. Okay. Yeah. Any, do you need any sort of um, what is release agent on your parts if, if uh, you have a okay. similar plastic? You, no, no need to um, uh, just take care of the um, draft angles. You, no need to uh, do any release agents, smoothen the sides maybe, but that's about it. Yeah, the material is flexible enough that you can pop it out. And you do also sell the, the materials that people can use, we right? We sell the materials from 0.3 to um, 3 millimeters. Yeah. But people can still use their own, like it's not chipped yeah, or anything. Yeah, they're not, they're not bound to our ecosystem. They can go out and buy materials from yeah. anywhere, yeah. That is nice. All right, can we form this one yet? Is it heated up? It's, it's heating up. We're waiting. Oh, it's for, getting there. Yeah, it's waiting for it to go, come up to um, 160. It's getting there. It has an infrared sensor that looks at the plastic. So it's the reading right here, it's not the heater, it's the actual material that's right. being sensed. So this bit down here? Yeah, that's an yeah. infrared uh, thermometer. This looks a lot like a consumer oriented device that you can uh, buy off the shelf and have, you know, schools or, you know, yeah. entry level yeah. makers use. Um, the thing that always comes up is safety. How does yours deal with that? Um, yeah, safety. Um, we have um, like uh, timeouts, timers. Right. Yeah, if, if it goes idle for a certain amount of time, it's going to shut off by itself. Yep. Um, there's an aftermarket screen that we're developing so that you can pop it in there. So if a child is around the vicinity of the machine, they can't put their hand in there and okay. hurt themselves. Yep. So um, it, it's those things. Um, we are working our, on our um, CE and FCC and yule certificate. Yep. So we're going to get all of that. So yep. it's going to be safe. And I'd, I'd also take it that if you don't have any material in there and just heat it up, it's also going to sense that and uh, not heat that far yeah, or yeah. just heat to that temperature yeah, that you've set it to? That's correct. If, it, if, it, if there's no material in there and the heater is on, the software is going to detect that it's not ready. It's, it's about ready to go now. That sucks it in nicely. Yeah. Yep, so um, we, we use a two-stage vacuum system, one for high airflow, which um, takes yeah. out all, most of the air, and then a second vacuum that squeezes out the little last bit of air. 
Yeah, yeah it's, it's, okay, so it, it gets really tight at the end. It's not just a yeah. standard vacuum. Yeah. It's actually four times more powerful than a shop vac. Ooh. Nice. Mm -hmm. So cool. it, is, um, it is priced for the consumer, but um, we actually put a lot of the, the tech in there. How much is one of these if you, or when it comes to market? It's, it's going to be around um, eight, 850, 825. All right, can we demold this? We can demold this. Yeah. There you go. There you go. Vacuum form. Promo mode. Perfect. All right. <laughs> Thanks for your time. Uh, Thank you. Looking forward to this thing coming to market. Okay. I, I think there was some really good stuff in there. It's from, you know, all throughout the price ranges. You can have a super cheap vacuum forming. You can have a $500 CNC mill or even cheaper that mills an entire plywood sheet. Uh, yeah, I'm hoping that that's inspiring to you to, you know, find different processes than just 3D printing or just CNCing or just making everything by hand. Well, again, if I missed anything, let me know in the comments below. Hope you enjoyed this one. I'll see you in the next one.